Hi, I'm G Charman and welcome to my Back to Basics series. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make deliciously boozy mulled wine. So I've just got a bottle of normal red wine. You don't want to buy the best, but you also don't want to buy the cheapest because it's really vinegary. So I'm just going to put about a quarter of a bottle, don't worry, the rest is going in later, into the pan and put it on a medium heat. Now the idea for this is that I'm going to make a nice syrup that is infused with all the spices and then add the rest of the wine later. So into that little bit of wine I'm going to add a cinnamon stick. Don't use ground cinnamon, it doesn't taste very nice, so that can go in. And then one star anise. Star anise are really strong, so just find one, single one, because otherwise it can be far too aniseedy. And then cloves, which everybody has around Christmas time. And with the children sticking them into every cross in the Christmas ham. But about three or four of those can go in. And then a little pinch of nutmeg. I've got some ground nutmeg, but you can freshly grate it if you have that as well. Again, not too much, it's quite strong. And then a vanilla pod. Now, it's not traditional to put vanilla in it, but this is a special one. This is, you know, a home one. If you're buying it in a bottle from a supermarket or on the street corners, Mind you, it's made you sound like a wino, but you know what I mean, at a Christmas fair, then it wouldn't normally have vanilla in, but I think it gives a real added sweetness to it. So I'm going to pop that in. I'm not actually going to take the seeds out of it. I'm just going to pop it in like that. And then mulled wine is naturally sweet. So this is a little bit of brown sugar. I tend to use brown rather than castor because it adds that real caramel flavour to the mulled wine rather than just a sweetness. So I'm going to put a little bit in. Now, depending on what wine you've got and how much you reduce this down will depend on how much sugar. You can always add more, it's quite difficult to take it away. So I'm just going to put a little bit in to start with and leave the rest for later. So what you want to do is stir this until the sugar has dissolved and it thickens slightly to a little bit of a syrup. Now the reason I'm doing this rather than putting the whole bottle of wine in is because mulled wine is meant to be a little bit boozy. If you put the whole bottle in and boil it down to get the infusion, then you take away all the alcohol and then what's the point of drinking it? But this way, you keep most of the alcohol in the remainder of the bottle, and so you just get all this intense flavour in this amazing syrup. So I'm just going to let this bubble away gently now that the sugar has dissolved. So if you want a full list of ingredients and the method, why not check out the description box? So now I'm going to prep my orange. I'm going to take a few strips of orange zest using a speed peeler off this. And that's where all the natural oils in citrus fruits sit. So this can go into the wine and infuse. But doing it like this means they're easy to take out later and no one's going to be eating them. So that can go in as well. So with the rest of this orange, I'm just going to top and tail it and then cut round, taking off the pith, curving the knife around, taking the pith off. That word's very easy to say, as long as you haven't drunk too much mulled wine. You literally just curve the knife round and get them all off. So there you have your peeled orange. And then I'm just going to cut little rounds. And these look amazing floating in the top of your glasses. So now that's reduced down and it's gone slightly sticky and really deep and rich in colour and smells amazing. I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit and pour in the rest of the bottle. Now at this stage, you don't really want to bubble it furiously. You just want it to warm through and infuse. At this stage now, I'm just going to add the little discs of fresh orange. And if you've got clementines, you can always use those as well. So give that five minutes on a very low heat, maybe just slightly turning over and simmering. And if you're not that much in your booze, you can always bubble it a little bit more furiously. So I'm just going to have a quick little taste, chef's perks and all, just to see if it needs any more sugar. And I'll say just a tiny little bit. You can always adjust it to your own taste. Stir that in and it hasn't boiled, it hasn't bubbled, it's just warmed through beautifully. So I'm just going to serve this up and if you've liked this recipe and want to see more, why not click on the subscribe button? Not everything contains booze, I promise. And as you can see, the orange is broken up very slightly so that all that beautiful orange juice is in there as well. You can put a few of the spices in if you want to. 
but you never know, Auntie Ethel might choke on a star anise or, or a clove, so maybe leave them out. Bit of orange peel's okay. Can't miss that with your dentures. So if you've liked this recipe and want to see more, why not join me for my next episode in my Back to Basics series. Cheers. God, I love this. Mm.